All right, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hamert's Tribeca Trade Group. And uh, today is Tuesday the 27th. Uh, this will be a quick recap. Uh, sorry, I had a uh, webinar earlier and I've got a meeting right after this. So uh, we'll make this brief. But um, yeah, I would say uh, it is what it is, right? Yesterday, things looked great. Um, when I think when I sent out this video, I said, hey, we made some nice progress. Uh, we got we made a nice uh, move into value. So um, and then a completely turn around and move the other way. So it just kind of seems like the market that we've been in lately. As soon as you you feel like you you've kind of got things figured out and you've and you've got the next direction of the market, uh, we kind of pull back and it and it throws you for a loop. That's okay. That's what uh, the, these markets do. Um, the VIX is, is also crept right back up here. So before I move to any other charts and just look at the S&P chart, a couple of things to notice, right? Um, number one, we have not lost you know, any of the short-term moving averages. Uh, so we, we haven't lost the five, the 50, which is the purple, and the blue, which is the 20. So that looks okay on, on this side. However, on the, you know, the fact that we kind of have a almost a, a bearish engulfing candle, you just kind of have to wait, wait and see a little bit and see if this, this flush out today was a little bit of, of an overreaction to the testimony from, from, uh, from, from the new Fed chair. Uh, you could see the SPY volume was a little bit uh, higher than it was yesterday, but still not you know what we saw a couple of weeks ago back here when spy was trading a couple of times you know, a couple of times it's 30 day volume average 30 day volume it was about 70 percent of the average day's volume so it wasn't that bad um eem which kind of got squashed a little bit today with the stronger dollar remember with international etfs you do have currency exposure unless they say that they're hedging it something like eem does not hedge so you're there you're sitting with with a basket of local stock so that's great when the dollar goes down but not so good when the dollar goes up. Um, in this case, the, the dollar went up today. Um, so that's the S&P chart. Um, I think it's kind of a wait and see. And while the volatility, I'll kind of go over to the VIX. You know, if you were excited about the VIX moves yesterday, um, all the way down and got under 16, I believe, it still is kind of hang hanging around and uh, was up 17% today. Um, again, I, you know, if you're looking for, for an explanation, I, I don't really have one. Uh, I mean, I, I guess that they didn't like the comments. Maybe the, the market wasn't completely expecting three interest rate hikes. Um, I think that is now being processed for that. But um, I, I think all along, I think most traders were probably figuring three. You hear some traders even talk about four rate hikes, but Fed fund futures were not pricing it in for whatever reason. Now I think they're, they're pricing it in. And it sounds like the guy... Um, it sounds like the the, the guy mean, means business um, in terms of that. So, um, you know, maybe a little bit of jitters with a new uh, 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 Fed chair as well. Who knows? But price is, is the number one thing to respect here. The Qs, you know, I kind of went into today thinking that the Qs have, have really run its course for a bit and we're due for a pause. Not so much a major pullback, but at least a pause. I mean, this has been by far the best... Um, I don't know. I want to say by far, but it's it's been this group has been very very strong. FDN, which is the my Fang proxy, uh, it's the internet ETF that I make reference to a lot. Made a 52 week high yesterday. Actually made a 52 week high today, but but came off it. But again, it didn't really lose any of the uptrends. So I, I would not try to um, decent volume in this ETF by the way today. Uh, you know. I would not draw major conclusions from today unless you see some price, you know, something, uh, the trend being violated. I, I think it was just was an overall nasty day for, for the bulls or for longs. Um, and the other thing that I'll, that I'll reiterate again is, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to, if, you're, if you have an open mind, uh, there's a lot of opportunities to day trade in this environment. So, you know, a couple months ago when the VIX was at 11 and things weren't, were just kind of uh, grinding a bit. But here you, you, you really have things moving fast. So um, if you can handle that volatility as, as a day trader, there's, there's definitely there, there's some opportunities to kind of go back and forth and then, you know, get out of things by, by the end of the day. So, you know, it was just on a webinar and talking about how as a retail investor, you have that flexibility to kind of pick and choose what type of strategy and, and what kind of tools you want to bring out of the toolbox um, rather than just sick, 
sit with the same strategies that may not be working in this particular market. And that's fun. If you're not a big day trader, if you're more of a swing trader, listen, I'm more of a swing trader. It's just um, I, I think right now you keep your position size a little bit smaller, which we talked about weeks ago um, in, in this while this was straightening itself out. And, um, you know, keep a little bit more cash on the sidelines because there there are a lot of positive things going on with this market. But, you know, certain things need, need to come in a little bit more. I was looking at the BABA chart. Um, that was one of the last things I was just looking at. And, you know, I think if this thing comes in a little bit more going into J, JD earnings, this will be pretty good. Um, just a couple signals that we saw today, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. As I mentioned, it'll be a shorter video today. Uh, Constellation Brands. So kind of just go back to what I said in the beginning of the day. I said I was looking for... Uh, some things other than tech, you know, something a little bit different. Um, I don't want to get, um, you know, keep adding technology names, even though they've had the momentum. At some point, they're going to take at least a little bit of a breather. And I think, you know, having some other names in your portfolio than just straight up tech names uh, is, is a pretty good idea. And I know it's while everything's moving to or has been moving to the upside, uh, you know, you want to be in there to, to, to grab those moves. But uh, I think a diversified approach uh, or at least to kind of take some profits in some of those high flyers and, and redistribute them either to cash or to a couple other names makes makes a lot of sense. So um, Constellation Brands, this I, I like this trade. This is a name that had earnings, didn't do so well on earnings, but they've kind of come in pretty decently. They're above price, just got above this downward trend line. I'm waiting. I started a position today. You could see the size of what they did today. And I like these trades uh, going out to July. These are not your, your, your weekly... Uh, momentum, uh, you know, trades where somebody's looking for for you know, a big move in one particular day. They're going out to July, and they're going a little bit above the. Um, they're going a, a little bit above where the stock price is right now, 220s right here. Um, so I started a position. All I did was I bought um, a two lot. You know, you can see these are not cheap calls. These July uh, 220s for for 12.90. So I've got about a $2,500 position on. And then I'll wait for confirmation. Uh, what I'm looking for is this name to get above the 50. Notice it tried to do this once or once here, twice, and it failed. So uh, today I, I would call that a, a baby failure. And then you know give it a, give it a little bit of time um, to see if it if it can recoup and, and get back above the 50-day moving average. But certainly someone really likes the trade. I think this was about six or seven million dollars in um, in option premium. Um, and then another name that I um, had my eye on today is Win. Win. Uh, there's going to be some Macau numbers later in the week. You got an MA. Oh, let me just go back to STZ. The last thing I would say is other for for uh, additional confirmation. Oh, it looks like we did already did have an MACD crossover there. Uh, so Win. Uh, there was a couple of really nice trades that went up, and some of the stuff you really have to go through with a fine tooth comb. But May 175 calls, you know, just 280. So I think they're trying to fly underneath the radar here. Could be. Uh, you know, it's $284,000 in premium. I and mean, they traded a total of 1,000 of those, or roughly um, right around 1,000 contracts. May 175, again, get, going out a little bit further, going past their their um, their possible earnings date. You never really know with Win because with win they changed it all the time. But, you know, this is just trying to kind of get above the 50-day moving average, and it just fired an MACD crossover. So um, I, I like this trade. Um, a lot. The tech space, uh, you know, the semi space, I, I mentioned this morning because I'm already long, I've been long Micron, and I said, hey, I'm not really looking for any more semi names at this point. These things have just been absolutely on fire. But what did we see in the, in the morning today? We saw uh, call buying in, in AM, and you could see uh, this kind of looks like a, re a bit of a reversal bar, or a toppy looking bar, an SMH, which we're going to see in a lot of different. Um, you know, charts today, but they went after AMD today, just crazy uh, over and over and over in the morning. Those call buyers kind of dried up in the afternoon as everybody seems to run for the hills with the volatility uh, staying present through the afternoon. But um, AMD is above the 200 day moving average now. So it certainly hasn't really um, participated uh, lately other than just back and forth movement. And then the other name that they've, uh, you know, continued, I, I give Intel the, the silver medal for um, in, in terms of the, the option activity that we've seen in, in the semi space, Micron getting the gold medal and set and Intel getting the, um, the, the silver medal. So really uh, continuous repeat call activity in, in Intel. So I like that as well. All right, that's it for today's video. Have a great night and see you Wednesday morning.